In the first part of the textual explanation of this chapter, that is deep water, we discussed about uh, William Douglas uh, narrative uh, style in which he seems to be quite truthful as he is not definite about uh, the age that he is mentioning. He mentions uh, uh, 10 or 11 uh, and when he talks about his early childhood uh, visiting uh, the California beaches uh, with his father, again there he mentions uh, the age as uh, 3 or 4. Uh, we also discussed uh, that when he uh, goes to YMCA pool, uh, there he remains uh, timid, means he was uh, scared and cautious in doing whatever he wanted to. And his uh, uh, liking to learn the swimming uh, surfaces through this uh, uh, description that although he was uh, skinny, he subdued his pride, he did not want to show his leg, but he subdued his pride, surrendered his pride and uh, wore the swimming uh, costume showing his uh, skinny legs. Uh, however, there a uh, bully, muscular boy tosses him into the uh, deep end of the pool, which was nine feet deep. He was uh, uh, at the bottom of the pool, means Douglas was at the bottom of the pool in the sitting position. He at once reached there. He was scared, but he could plan. He not only planned, but he acted. He tried to jump up with uh, whatever strength he had, but uh, the plan could not get executed as he thought it to be, that he could not come to the surface like uh, a cock. So let's see what happens next. So he came up very slowly uh, and when he opened his eyes, I opened my eyes, I uh, here uh, is Douglas. When he opened his eyes and saw, means noticed, what he noticed? Water. Uh, water that had a dirty yellow tinge to it, a dirty yellow uh, shade to it. Just recall uh, that in the first part we discussed that he could uh, notice or see clearly the clean tiled bottom of uh, the pool. But how come uh, this water now uh, all of a sudden has become yellow or has got a dirty yellow shade? Uh, the reason here is uh, the fear that has uh, made clear unclear, the clean water unclean in vision. I grew uh, panicky. Now he was in the state of intense fear. Uh, he was uh, just visualizing an extreme loss maybe of his life. I reached up as if to grab a rope. This shows his restlessness. He wanted to pull some rope, anything. And my hands clutched only in water, but he could hold firmly only water. When you hold water firmly, what happens? You hold nothing. There is nothing in your hand. Means this, the word clutch and grab shows his desperation to come out of this uh, water and uh, his clutching water shows his uh, miserable state that he intensely wanted to come out of water but he could not. I was suffocating. It was uh, difficult for him to breathe. I tried to cry, cry aloud wildly. He tried to yell out, but no sound came out. Why? Because his mouth was inside water and sound waves cannot travel through water. Then my eyes and nose came out. He could see, he could smell as his eyes were out, his nose was out, uh, but not my mouth, but his sound could not reach out. I flyled at the surface of water. He moved about violently. When you are drowning, you try hard to come out of water, striking with arms, striking with legs, striking with your heads, but he swallowed water and he suffocated. I tried to bring my legs up, but they hung as dead weights, as if they were lifeless, paralyzed and rigid, harsh. A great force was pulling me under. What was this great force? That fear as a weakness. 
he was going down was pulling me and I screamed there was nobody inside the pool the muscular boy was not inside the pool that he was pulling him down it was his fear which was making him weak and making him go down fast I screamed he gave a sudden loud cry but only the water heard me means sound this time also does not come out I had started on the long journey back so 90 feet are now a long journey back a long journey generally is of thousand miles but this nine feet now is appearing to be a long journey means he is now in an intenser state of uh, fear I struck at the water as I went down so he his long journey uh, down towards the bottom of the pool uh, was there but he kept on persisting he kept on striking he kept on trying I struck at water as I went down expanding consuming fully my strength as one in a nightmare a nightmare is a deeply upsetting dream uh, maybe you have some uh, uh, negative uh, visualization uh, in a dream uh, you a loss of some dear friend or of some property or of something that uh, is very dear to you an irresistible force an overpowering force a force ca that cannot be beaten defeated overcome I had lost all my breath he could not breathe he was breathless my lungs were paining my head was beating okay I was getting dizzy means there was whirling uh, sensation but I remembered the plan and what was it I would spring jump from the bottom uh, of the lowest level of the pool and come like a cock immediately to the surface I would lie flat on the water uh, hit out with my arms and beat with my legs then I would get to the edge of the pool thrashes to beat strike is to hit then I would get to the corner of the pool edge corner of the pool and be safe so this was the plan that was there in his mind even when he went down for the second time and then he said I went down down endlessly so it was an endless journey downward so nine feet a long journey now an endless journey so what is he showing the impact of fear growing deeper on him I opened my eyes he opened his eyes nothing but water water was around with a yellow glow what is it now that yellow glow has turned into dark water the clean water has now turned into dark water what has made it dark water his fear so that means when the fear was not at all there the water was clean for him when the fear had a grip on him it grew dirty yellow and now when it has the stronger hold on him it the water appears to be uh, translucent means he cannot look through it so this is how the fear impacted him so badly and then sheer stark terror held me complete extreme terror the terror in its original form unshaded naked terror that knows no understanding means that does not understand you how is it it is harming you or how much it is torturing you the terror does not understand terror that knows no control terrors which is uncontrollable means it is handling it the way it likes and making you uh, suffer terror that no one can understand who has not experienced it he says if you have not experienced it you cannot know it and expressing it is beyond words no words can be used to express such terror I was shrieking means uh, giving out a loud cry of terror as if for life I was paralyzed and under water stiff hard rigid rigid not moving with fear so this was the effect of fear it makes you stiff your limbs don't move it makes you rigid your limbs don't obey your command you want to move your legs you want to move your arms but terror doesn't allow you to do that only my heart and the pounding in my head 
means uh, the contraction and expansion in his head said that I was still alive. So now his limbs have stopped moving. Only his uh, inner organs like heart and head are uh, throbbing. Said that I was still alive, not dead. And then in the midst of the terror, in the middle of the terror came a touch of rationality. And what was it? I must remember to jump when I hit the bottom. At last, I felt the tiles under me. My toes reached out as if to grab them, to grip them suddenly. I jumped with everything I had. But what he had, a pounding head and beating heart. But the jump made no difference. He was still there in the same water of the pool. The water was still around me. I looked for ropes, ladders, water wings. So see his persistence, even uh, under extreme uh, fearful condition, when he was almost paralytic, we have just discussed his legs were not moving, his arms were not moving. He was trying, he was uh, looking for uh, something that could save him like ropes, ladder, uh, water wings, we have just discussed in the uh, previous lecture that what are the water wings uh, worn around arms or legs that helps children swim. Nothing but water, but there was nothing but his tormentor water around. A mass, a big amount of yellow water held me. Was the water holding him? Not his fear was holding him. That was making him weak. Stark terror took an even deeper hold on me, means held him strongly like a great charge, jolt of electricity. It was shaking him. I shook and trembled with fear. He was shaking with fear, so as if he was getting electric shock. My arms wouldn't move, my legs wouldn't move. Why? They were rigid. Why? Because of the impact of fear. I tried to call for help to call for mother, he, what, this is his mental state that he is explaining to us. This is psychological analysis of fear. Nothing happened, nothing positive happened. Nobody came, neither any help nor his mother. And then strangely there was light. Now there is a change. I was coming out of that awful, terrible, extreme yellow water. At least my eyes were. That means, they see how specific it is. Earlier he is saying, uh, I was coming out of uh, that terrible water. Then he specifies, this, at least my eyes were. My nose was out too. Now he was uh, floating on water. He could breathe, he could see. Then I started down a third time. So when he goes down the third time, then he experiences death. Third time down the pool. I sucked for air. He was trying to draw in air so that he could breathe. But what he got was water. It means even at that point of time he was trying. That is his persistence. The yellowish light was going out. Now he was growing unconscious. Then all effort ceased stopped. I relaxed. Even my legs felt limp, not firm. And a blackness swept over, covered his brain. And with that blackness, that consciousness of uh, dying, of losing life also went out. It removed fear. It wiped out fear, eliminated completely. It wiped out terror, the uh, less mighty feeling of fear and the strong feeling of losing life, that is terror, both were gone. There was no more panic. It was quiet and peaceful, calm and noiseless. Nothing to be afraid of. This is nice to be drowsy, to be unconscious, to sleep, Not no need to jump, too tired to jump. It's nice to be carried gently. So this was the impact of death that he was much scared of. It was gentle. It was comfortable to float along in space. He felt 
as if he was in the sky tender arms around me tender arms like mother so it was comforting like mother now i must sleep i crossed to unconsciousness and the curtain of life fell as if he felt he died the next i remember i was lying upside down vomiting the jab that threw me in was saying but i was only fooling this shows the indifference of the child that uh, muscular boy the boy almost died with douglas almost died he said i was just uh, uh, kidding i was just making fun someone said the kid almost died but all right now let's carry him to the locker room this is a room at the swimming pool to change clothes or keep your objects on railway stations also there are locker rooms where you can keep your belongings in banks also there are locker rooms where you can keep your several hours after later i walked home I means it took him several hours to normalize uh, fear has shaken him so much i was weak and trembling shaky i shook he was shaking and he cried when i lay on my bed when he was at home i couldn't eat that night he was so uncomfortable that he uh, did not feel like eating anything so uh, that was the short term effect for days a uh, haunting a uh, stalking means generally boys follow a girl so that is uh, called stalking and uh, similarly the fear followed him uh, that was there in his heart the slightest exertion physical or mental effort would disturb him making me uh, weak and shaky in the knees and his stomach would go loose i never went back to the pool so these were the physiological impact of fear on him i feared water i avoided it uh, whenever i could he now uh, had an escapist attitude who is an escapist who tries to evade or escape the situation he doesn't face the, the situation which makes him or her uncomfortable so here going near water would make him uncomfortable so he avoided going near that a few years later when i came to know the waters uh, waters refer to any uh, uh, body of water like river lake etc i went to get into them he wanted to go there and whenever i did whether i was wading the tide on walking through shallow water that is wading a duck also wades uh, the on the surface of water the tide on or bumping river or bathing in warm lake of got rocks the terror that had held me uh, seized me held me in the pool would come back so that means it had its root the terror had its roots in his deep in his mind deep in his heart it has marked him his soul and it was not leaving him accompanying him everywhere it would take possession of me completely when something takes possession of you completely it let uh, doesn't let you do what you desire so if you are in possession of something you treat it the way you like and if you are in uh, possession uh, or you are in somebody else's possession you will be treated the way that person likes so here he was in the possession of fear and fear was deciding where he should go and if he goes near water he feels uncomfortable my legs would become paralyzed he would recall that same fear and he would uh, not move and if further he would feel shaky i see horror would grab my heart so here the horror is not icy but it has icy impact on his spirit his hands and uh, feet would go cold i see would grab my heart so it would have chilling effect on him uh, dampen his spirit uh, 